Located at just over 4,000 feet on the Colorado Plateau, with a climate that borders on arid, Moab can be an inhospitable place. There are few trees, even less streams, but what it has got in abundance is rock. In fact, in every direction you look, the red rock rules this wild, weather-beaten landscape. And it's because of its geology and blue sky climate, and maybe some fortunate land access laws, that Moab could quite possibly be an EMTB oasis. And so I swung into a geological wonder wall. We rolled into Moab early December on a ticket that had been provided to us by Trek and suitably rigged up with the all new 160 mil rail proceeded to seek out some EMTB gold. Trails that truly define just what an EMTB is all about. With such a huge range, powerful drive unit and all new EMTB geometry, the perfect partner to get fully involved in a pretty feisty landscape. Now, coming from the UK, we often associate Slick with Slidey. But one legendary route in Moab is a trail whose name might well suggest otherwise, but is in fact said to offer ultimate grip. An unrelenting trail that rises and falls like the day and night temperatures of this hub carved deep in the mountain bike folklore of Utah. Sorry, Utah. <laughs> At just over 10.5 miles then, our first loop takes us over a landscape of petrified sand dunes and eroded remnants of ancient seabeds. It's called Slick Rock and it's an absolute roller coaster. If you look at maybe the bucket list of any magazine or website worldwide and you will get trails such as the whole enchilada which starts up in the mountains in the background. You've got Porcupine Rim which is on the horizon here. So this place really is quite legendary. Normally out in the UK, if I came across, say, a 20 foot square piece of sandstone, I'd be absolutely buzzing. But out here, there's literally thousands of acres of the sandpaper rough stuff. Crazy angles, insane grip. But you wouldn't want to come off. The lack of resistance here is crazy. You pick up speed just so quickly. In fact, I think the added weight of an EMTV actually makes this place a little bit more rideable than an MTV. In actual fact, the first Slick Rock Trail was designed for Honda Trail 90s by Richard R. Wilson in 1969, way before the mountain bike was invented. And I fully believe that this trail is perfect for the modern EMTV. The flying machine that I'm trying to hold on to in this mountain bike mecca is the Trek Rail. 160 mil travel. Now I'm riding it in the 29 inch wheel front and rear, but you can change that to 27.5 if you want to. The bike comes in a variety of specifications, but I really like the manual shifting of the Shimano XT paired with the RockShox fork and shock on it. Of course, it's the new smart system by Bosch with the, with the 750 watt hour battery. And you know what? I'm actually using Tour Plus mode quite a lot in this resistance free landscape. Of course, I did have the option, and a very easy one at that, to make a custom motor setting on the track. But to be honest, there was no need, as this rail is lively enough. Now, all around Slick Rock are these little steps, and to give you an example, you might be thinking that Tor Plus is not enough. This is Tor Plus. Oh my god, it's so good! Of course, you might be wondering why it's called Slick Rock when it's so goddamn grippy. 
Well, the reason for that is that the early settlers described it because of the lack of friction between the sandstone and the metal hooves of the horses which you used to travel in the area. And I can only think that having SPDs on this rock is going to be a nightmare. I've got to be honest, I've been a little bit carried away here the last hour of riding. This really got me thinking that this place is actually the perfect place to get the ultimate balance and suspension setup on your e-mountain bike. And the reason for that is that there's no loose rocks or dirt or dust or roots to deal with. And oh, probably, it's probably boring you. There's lots of rocks to ride. For over 50 years, these Moab rocks have been used by two wheels. But there can be few places on earth that feel just so custom made for EMTBs than this place. After a couple of laps in this ultra fast place, it has been a tough but unforgettable day. Well, that was a pretty smooth start on the slick rocks here on day one in Moab, Utah. Day two, we're now going to tackle something a little bit more rugged and we're going up into the hills behind us have a look at a trail called a Massavac. I think we'll have a bit of a walk around town first. Now, we've been having our breakfast at such places as the Red Rock Bakery and Love Muffin. Now, did you know that in the 1950s, Moab was known as the uranium capital of the world and with an average rainfall of about 250 millimeters has six times less than say Blyneye for Sinyog, which is actually the slate capital of the world. Now I've been to Moab a few times now I'm kind of getting tuned into the weather here. In the summer it can be smoking hot with temperatures hitting into the high 40s. But here in the winter it's now December the average is around seven degrees, but in the night it is super cold. But then again, there's plenty of bars to get warmed up in. Bars that might once have been frequented by cowboys. You might also recognize it as an iconic location of famous westerns. The likes of Richard Widmark, Henry Fronda, John Wayne, all battled out here in this wild landscape. Of course, there's other things to do in Moab apart from mountain biking. So from the petrified sand dunes of Slick Rock to here in Archers National Park. It's a truly stunning uh, location. We've got behind me the Three Gossips, Sheep Rock, Tower of, ba Tower of Babel, and there in the middle is the organ. The Moab area offers thousands of miles of excellent riding for e-bikes. These miles are primarily regulated as motorized routes. However, some of the great off-road places to visit include Flat Iron Mesa, Seven Mile Rim, Poison Spider Mesa, Dead Horse Point. Ah yes, you might recognize that from an old cigarette advert. All great, but our task ahead of us today, one of the toughest. So we've just transitioned through town up this incredible valley with 500 foot cliffs. We come to the trailhead at Amasabak. Now Amasabak is a grade five trail. It's a black, plenty of super technical climbs on it, some flat out descent. And of course, when you get to the top, there's the Colorado River. Picking up a Jeep track and uh, it's quite a complex Jeep track. Not exactly mid Wales territory. Jeepers creepers. I mean, look, I think it's just tempting to look at these views. It's madness. Oh, wow. A little bit of rain overnight, so I don't know if that's going to make the sandstone grippier or trickier. We'll find out. Fuck. That's hard. How the hell am I going to get up there? Oh, Jesus. Gah! I'm going to force it. Now, whilst there are some technical sections to a massacre back, don't be too alarmed because there's also some big acreage of flat rock as well. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I might just bring my words back. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. 
I hope you can see this. It's like, uh, let's say it's a puzzle. Oh, stage one. I mean, how? Jeeps can't come up here. It's just ludicrous. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Really quite satisfying. Nailing some of that. It was lucky for me that I had the pokey 85 Nm Bosch motor and roomy geometry to back me up on this punishing climb as I hunted down the grip aided by the always supportive motor and kept in check by a balanced front and rear end of the all new bike. It is very cool because once you've got really hard tech sections you've got mellow ones if you're wanting to learn some e-bike climbing techniques then I'd say it's pretty much the perfect trail. You can work in your body position, you can work in your bike setting, and if you're bored of that, you can work on the views, which are crazy. And here it is, the top of a Massaback, about a thousand feet and three miles in distance. And it's worth it technically as well as visually. Ahead of me are the Canyonlands National Park. To my right, the Arches National Park. And behind me, the famous Finns. But it's below me. About, oh, must be a thousand feet, is the famous Colorado River. Now the Colorado begins its life in Colorado, moves through such places as Grand Junction here in Moab, and then proceeds to go through seven American states, two Mexican states, before entering the sea 1,500 miles later. To put that in perspective, the River Thames in the UK, about 200 miles. Now this is actually where the Colorado River once used to run. It's known as Jackson's Hole. Now, I'm thinking if there was actually a river or a lake in there, it would actually be an oxbow lake, but there's no lake because Moab's a bit dry. As I skirted the famous Jackson's Hole, I was fully absorbed in some very highly strung terrain. I knew though that ahead of me, I had some high speed bedlam to deal with. Reassuring then to have the very silent chassis of the rail to allow me to do just that, rail my lines and also the agonizingly tuned suspension design, holding me steady when things got out of shape. It's not only uh, slick rock, you've got some very loose rock to deal with on occasions, and then you can look for your direction. Oh, treacherous in places, it really is. Like any of these rocks, it can have you off. But if you have a rock on a slab that is a nightmare. Really a little bit. Ooh, look at that. Then it opens up. Whoa. There it's off camber. Oh God. So like I said, double track, double the fun. You can choose your line. Everyone's a winner. Here you go, here's the smoothest part of the trail. Lovely bit of sand. So we're back in the bad stuff. We're now in the loose bad stuff. Steppy. Ugh. Look at this, look at this. Tire biting in. Wow, she's coming off the hill. End of the day. Look at those hills firing. Stunning. You've got to be really careful in this sand and stone mix. Oh, here we go. Sometimes you're gonna go round. Whoa! It's 
coming around the corner now. Lovely bit of sand again. Watch this. Watch that background. Ooh. How about that? How about that? Welcome to my lab, folks. Don't go left, you'll be in a ditch. Cane Creek, as in the Cane Creek, the River Creek. Through the water, don't want to get wet. After such an unforgiving drop off, it's probably just as well that the all new rail has been beefed up in the seat and head tube area and the 160 mil travel just the right balance of the downs and equally punishing ups and a geometry which totally reflects such use. This then is new school rock. These are now the lands that the EMTBs roam. To roam on the rail is one of life's great pleasures. To do this in one of the world's great wonders, pretty damn unreal. Just remember, if you're gonna shoot, shoot. Yeehaw!